Hello, let's continue our disassembly of a kitchen appliance to see how they make it reliably and cheaply. So we took apart the main chassis, we looked at the heating elements and so on. And the last thing to talk about just on this part here is where the mains wires come in. So we have the live and the neutral go to screw terminals. The earth goes to the metal casing. Now on the other side we've got a switch. It may not look like a switch to you, but it is. So when the toaster is pushed on, doop, like that, what happens now is that the contacts, I think you can just see where my thumb is there, the contacts close and it connects both the live and the neutral to the heating element. So the heating element is connected to these stiff wires here which are welded to the heating element contacts, so each side. Now on the other side, we've also got contacts to the heating element and this is just a tapping off the lowest part of the heating element, so it's just maybe the bottom 5% of the heater and that gives you something like 10 volts coming out of here which will connect to the wires which go to the electronic circuit which means that we've got something like a 5% share of the mains voltage to go into here and power the circuit safely. So you might see here that we've got the bottom part, the toast rests, which are on the other side of the toaster. And when we turn on the toaster, we push down the handle, it clicks into place. There's a mechanical click there. So all the electric circuit has to do is to count the time for the toaster to cook. And then at the end of the time, there's a little electromagnet down here which should energize, pull back a little steel plate and up it comes, just like that. So let's see how this works. Now we need to take the circuit off first, so we just want to undo the three screws here. One, up it comes, these screws are screwed into the thermoset plastic shell, so it's quite nice and secure. And take the last third screw out. Not quite ready to come out, so mm, something else holding it on. Let's just pull this down. Oh, there's the other screw there. So undo that. Lovely. And then the whole mechanism comes off. So now we can turn it over and see the other side of the board. Oh, there's not much on here. I thought there'd be a massive computer or something. Instead, it's just two little transistor-like components. There's a diode, a couple of capacitors, a variable resistor, and uh, a few resistors. Hmm, so how does it work? Well, first of all, the low voltage share of the mains is coming in, probably about 10 volts alternating current. You can't have AC for a control circuit. We need to turn it into DC. So we just use the diode here for that. And that means that the minus current is cut out and we only have the plus current. And then that just goes to the capacitor here. And the capacitor will then just keep the high peaks of the voltage and store those charges that are put in there. So just keep the voltage nice and high instead of going bump, bump, bump is what we get if the capacitor was not there. All right, so we have ourselves a reasonable supply. How has the timing happened? Well, we've got another capacitor here, and this is meant to charge up quite slowly via a fixed resistor and a variable resistor. Now, that variable resistor is our toaster control. So what happens here is that if the control is set to a low resistance, then the capacitor will fill up quite quickly, the toast will cook quickly. If we set for a higher resistance, then it will take a few more minutes for the capacitor to charge up, and so the toast will be cooked for a long time. That's fine. So what happens then when the capacitor gets up to a high enough voltage? Well, what we have here is a transistor to amplify the voltage of the capacitor. So basically what's happening is that when the capacitor is almost up to charge, this transistor is turned on 
and it will turn on this thing. Now, it's not a transistor, it looks like one, but it actually says SCR. So SCR stands for Silicon Controlled Rectifier. So it's also called a thyristor. What's that? Well, <laughs> it actually works like a toilet. When you have a toilet, you press the flush and whoosh, sometime, uh, suddenly all the water will rush down and it will keep flowing until the tank, the cistern, is empty. Similar with this, our cistern in this case is this capacitor. So what happens is that uh, when this is turned on, it's not like pressing the flush, it just goes a little pulse onto the gate of this thyristor and then that will suddenly allow the current from this capacitor, which is stores a charge inside, just to whoosh out. Where does it whoosh through? Our electromagnet on the other side. It's also called a solenoid. So what happens then, you just get a pulse of current going through here, you get a pulse of magnetic field, and that pulse of magnetic field will just suddenly pull down and release our mechanism. What's nice is this circuit only has to do a little pull on a steel tab. The actual pushing the toast back up again is done by the spring, which we have put our own energy into there to do that. So this circuit only has to do a little release. There you are. That's how the circuit works. It's quite simple, quite elegant, and it just works forever in a fairly hot place. There's no point in having a complicated computer or something like that when just a simple circuit like this works.